Okay, so let's look at parallel lines and proportional parts. Okay, so triangle proportionality theorem states that if I have a triangle that has, let me change the color, that has parallel lines like this, then that tells me that this side is proportional with this side is proportional with these two sides. I should have changed my color. That's what this is stating right here. So BA is compared to CB and DE is compared to CD. Not too bad, right? It makes sense because if these are parallel, it's cutting these segments in proportional parts, right? So the same distance. Okay, so let's do this first one. In RFT, RT, which they already show us, is parallel to BU. It also tells us each one of these slides, 3, 8, X, 12. So all I have to do is set up the proportion. So I'm going to set up 3 compared to 8. and x compared to 12. <coughs> 8 is 4 times 2. 12 is 4 times 3. Just making my life a little bit easier. 3 times 3 is 9 equals 2x. Divide by 2. x equals 4.5. Ready? All right, let's look at this one. Now let's look at the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem. The converse says that if this side compares to this side and this side compares to this side, then I know that these lines are parallel. But this example is a little tricky, so follow along with me. DH is 18. Here's DH. HE is 36. So we're going to be comparing these two sides. I'm going to set that up. DG is half of GF. Do I know what GF is? No. So I'm going to say GF is X. So if GF is X and DG is half of X, wouldn't I write that half of X or X divided into? So since 18 is compared to 36, I'm going to compare X divided by 2 with X. Now, several ways to look at this. Do you want me to simplify first or deal with this over here first? All right, let's deal with this. We don't usually write fractions like this, right? We usually write x divided by 2 is divided by x. But no, we don't really use this either, do we? We usually say x divided by 2, and we say, what's the inverse of division? Multiplication. So what's the inverse of x? 1 over x. The x's cancel each other out. And I'm left with 1 half. Huh. So that's 1 half. Check this out. Yes. Always. 18 is 18 times 1. Isn't 36 18 times 2? Cancel the 18. Isn't this also one half on this side? Are they proportional? Yes. Therefore, this is parallel with this. Okay, so let's look at triangle mid segment theorem. So triangle first let's talk about what mid what a mid segment is. 
A miss segment is a segment that's in the middle. Hmm, I wonder where they came up with that name. A segment in the middle. Sorry, it's that narrow. That cuts this segment in half and this segment. That's what makes it a mid segment. It's in the middle of these two sides. All right, so this says that if we have BD and AE parallel to each other, and BD is a mid segment, then BD, this segment right here, is half as long as this segment here. Huh? Makes sense, right? If it cuts the triangle in half, then the measure of this one is half as long as the base. So let's look at this here. Triangle ABC has vertices, blah, 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 blah. We have the vertices here. Find the coordinates of D and E. So I need to find the coordinates of this one and of this one. It tells me that this is a mid-segment. Just from my definition right now, what does a mid-segment mean? That doesn't tell me it's parallel. It tells me that mid-segment means it's cutting the triangle in half. It makes this side congruent with this side. And this one over here breaks this segment in half as well. That's what that means. So if this cuts this in half into two congruent segments, what can I say about D? It's the midpoint of A, B. So midpoint formula is that. I have an easy way to remember midpoint. The midpoint is the average of what? The average of two coordinates. What do we normally do when we have averages? We add them together and divide by two. Add together and divide by two. The average of my x's, my x's are negative two and two. Negative two and two. And my average of my y's, if I look at my y's, I have two and four. Connor, I don't really throw out formulas all the time because I'd rather you understand what it means because then you'll really remember it. Okay, so negative two plus two makes what? Zero. Zero over two makes what? Zero. Two plus four is six over two makes Three. Does that make sense? Zero, three? Zero up three? Yeah. Yes, it does. Let's find this other midpoint. Yeah, that's the midpoint of that point right there. Let's find the midpoint of this one. Midpoint of E. My pen keeps making noises on me today. What do you mean, can I just count it? But looks can be deceiving, right? Unless you tell me that the difference between 2 and 4 is 2, and I'm going to split the difference. That makes sense, right? Since I know it's the middle, then it must be right in between the two, right? Okay, so I'm trying to find the midpoint of negative 2 and my x over here is 4. So negative 2 plus 4. What? This point, point E. And my y's are 2 and negative 4. You could do that one in your head too. The distance between 4 up to here is 4. Then up 2 more would be 6. Cut it in half and you get, yep, I'm not going to do that, but you're right. Okay, so 
2 and negative 4. Yes. Yeah. You guys didn't work out what we were saying. How come? Two and negative four is negative two over one is negative one. We say you can't count it. Right, Mariana? Yeah. So negative 2 plus 2 is positive 2, so we get 1, negative 1. Does that make sense? 1, negative 1? Yes. Why does it make sense? What are you talking about? This is your x's. These are your y's. My, my y value is 2. My y value is negative 4. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Does the pla doesn't the placement make sense too? Over 1, down 1? Yeah, it's on a graph. Okay, I see what you're saying. Make sense now? Okay, that's as far as we got in first period. <laughs>